continuing with this case of uh, not eating for three days, the 12 year old Shih Tzu male, not neutered. Now you can see today is the day three of inpatient treatment. You can see he's so alert, barking, and happy. You can see the tail wagging. When on the day, day one he came in, he was very unhappy and was going to bite us. You can see in the first video, this is the third video. Now, the owner was in favor of a blood test due to economic reasons, but uh, blood test and urine test are the basic tests which, which are important to, to support your diagnosis of any infections of the blood system or the bladder or the urinary system. So now, I've spoken about the urinary test which shows that the blood had very high total white cell count. Oh, this is not the urinary test. This is the blood test. Okay, so now, now we talk about blood test. Urine test was already spoken earlier on. Now, the main, the main findings are actually the total white cell count, which is just point to be 42. Now, the normal is 5 to, no, 6 to 17. 6 to 17,000 cells per microliter. So that is definitely high, at least two or three times higher. And then we look at the absolute uh, neutrophils. Okay, neutrophils is 81%. Now, the normal one just is 60 to 70%. So just point your point out. This is a normal for most dogs, 60 to 70%. So there's an increase. Now, we look at the absolute numbers of neutrophils. You can see it's for 34.5 or 35 compared to the normal one, it's only 3 to 12. So there's no doubt this dog has a high bacteria infection, which we can show has evidence to the owner rather than just uh, guessing. Now, we look at the monocytes. Huh? The monocytes, 12.7%. Now, the normal CBC there is 3 to 10, so it's slightly high. Now, this increase in monocytes, uh, that increase would, would signify that there's a chronic infection. You look at the absolute number 5.41 compared to the normal one, it's 1 to 4. So there is a chronic infection. Then we look at the basal fuse. Huh? Look at basal fuse. It should be, it should be zero. It should, it's very rare in dogs. But you can see there's a 2.1 and uh, 0 0.9. Uh, the absolute you have nine cells nine zero uh, per microliter of blood. Now you look at the PCB. PCB is zero point three three. Normal should be zero point three seven and zero point five five. So this shows the dog was dehydrated. So IV drip is definitely important for survival. Now the platelets are okay, which is a good sign because if the platelets are low, then there will be a case of septicemia. So this old dog, who whom I've seen for the past 12 years ago, this has a puppy, has a better chance of survival if the playlists are okay. Now we go further to the to the complete uh, to the, the other part of the blood test. Uh, what we want to see is the cholesterol definitely we, we don't we don't, we don't mention much because they are normal and the dog is actually very thin. Uh. Diabetes is okay. The dog's not eating so you can see it's, it's a bit low. Mm. Liver is okay. You can see the cells. Liver cells are really within the normal range. Okay, then we go down to the bone and joint function. It's normal. There's no, no uric acid or low calcium. Then we go to kidney in a kidney. There's a starting of a kidney failure, I would say. You look at the creatinine, 177, which is up to the upper limit. But uh, the dog has the, is still okay as far as the kidney function is concerned. Okay, is there another one? No more. So in summary, what can we tell from this blood test? So total white cell count very high. It's a severe bacterial infection in the blood.
and from the bladder, the urine test, we know that the bladder also is is infected. So it's bacteremia and UTI, urinary tract infection. Now the swelling of the penis and, and the prepuce, the foreskin, is known as balanoprostitis. And that one is sometimes due to chronic urinary tract infection. They won't be treated. And so as far as this uh, blood test is concerned, you can see that uh, the neutrophils and the leukocytes are very high. So it comes from most likely chronic urinary tract infection, which has not been treated by the owner. Okay, then now we go to the next one. What's the next one? The anemia, is it anemia? Yeah, okay. Now anemia, anemia occurs when the dog is having a chronic illness, sickness. Huh? So what's the anemia, the, the cell count? So you can see that the hemoglobin is low, 11 point. With your 5.3. Uh, 5 5.3. Normal is how many? 5.5. Uh, it's slightly low. Huh? Then we check the other one. Red blood cell, total red blood cell count, how many? 3 point. 3.33. No, the red blood cells. 5.3. The hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is? 11.7. Uh, these two are low. As you compare the reference range, 12. This for what? For, him? for hemoglobin. 12 to 18. 12 to 18. And then the other one should be the. Red cells is 5.3, mm. which is should be 0.52. 5.5 to 8.5. So this, this is evidence of anemia, but not the serious one because it's just below the, the lower range, but it's still a cause for concern. So we do give IV drips plus multivitamins and uh, B12 as well, then you will go, you go home with multivites and uh, what was the, is there any more? So basically in conclusion, these two tests are actually very important to, to educate the owner. Of course it's, it costs money, it costs some money to, to do the test but without these two tests we are treating blindly with antibiotics. Huh? And we still don't know what's the cause, so in conclusion the cause would be most likely chronic uh, urinary tract infection, but there's no prostate in enlargement or or in tumor or so the dog can go home today, and then we can stop all the treatments. So that is considered a case closed with a happy outcome and also evidence of laboratory evidence of. Uh, supporting the diagnosis of chronic urinary tract infection leading to blood bacteria infection and therefore not eating for the three days before he came here.